Rice. Welcome to Code Decode. Today we are going to cover some more very frequently asked Java 8 interview questions. Please like, share and subscribe to support us and we are setting a like target of 500 likes. So let's get started. Now this is a very common interview question and a very common scenario that we face in our day to day life. Whenever we get into a real time project, there are many times we have to perform some calculations. I'll just give you a very simple example. Given an employee DB, fetch the person who is of the maximum age in the whole organization or fetch the employee whose age is minimum, who is the youngest employee of an organization or else you want to find that in a given organization, find the average age of all the employees working here. So for all these such kind of calculations, we have to do so many type of uh, coding. So first we will fetch all the employees, then you fetch all the age uh, and create a list of it. Then you sort that list and then when you sort in ascending order, you get the first minimum or you sort in a descending order, you find the maximum element. And then if you want to find the sum, then you put a, a for loop and add each of those uh, while iterating over the list of ages or divide it with the whole number with a count and find the average. So we have to do so much lot of tasks. But in one single line, you will be able to do it with Java 8. So let's see how to do it. So we are going to fetch a list of say integer or long. We'll change it in dynamically at runtime and we'll find ages of employees from repo. Find all, find all will give you list. So it's a collection, you can open a stream. On that stream, map each and every employee with their ages and collect it to a list. Because we don't want any unique ages, we are going to fetch all of them to list. Now you have all the ages with you. Let's see, do we have it or not? This is our database. What you should have is 30, 35, 32, 28 and 25. So let's see if we have it. So great. We have all the five records with it from starting to 30 to 25. So starting from 30 to 25. So the code is working for us. We need to do many kind of calculations on these ages. So let's open a stream on this ages because it's a list. And then since we need the summary statistics. So what is the method's name? Method's name is summary statistics. So we need find maximum, minimum. So we need to do some calculations. So it's very important to map each and every value to integer. And it takes a function. This method map to integer makes a function. What does it function? What does it do is it returns you an in stream consisting of result by applying given function on each element. So uh, since each element is already an integer, I'm just going to return it as it is. Now on this, you can do summary statistics. So uh, what you can not do is you cannot directly do summary statistics on any kind of stream. You can do summary statistics only and only on int type of streams. So that is why you have to map each and every two integer and then you can do summary statistics of it. What is this going to return you? It's going to return you in summary statistics. And this is a very special case of reduction and it's a terminal operation. Now with this summary statistics, you can get the maximum and get the minimum. So let's first see the output. What is the minimum? Minimum is 28. And what is the maximum? Max maximum I can see is 35. So 25 and 35. So let's get the minimum first. And let's try to return it. So 25 should be our output. And yes, 25 is our output. Let's try to get maximum. So this is the output for the maximum. That is 35. Great. You're able to get min and max with just this. What you would rather do is you can get everything into a in local variable summary and then you can change and modify it. Given a list of integers or you are given a list of ages, what you have to do is find the maximum, find the minimum, find the average age of the employees working in an organization. How will you do that? So just create one, a single line or method of Java 8. Open a stream and map it to integer to make it an integer stream and then use summary statistics. Now, whatever he says, if he asks you to get the minimum, just use the local variable and get minimum. You will get the minimum. Use maximum, you will get the maximum. So let's see, are, are we able to get maximum? Yes, we are able to get the maximum. 35 is the maximum. Now, if I try to get, what are methods we have? Get average. 
So we'll figure the average age from this. That is 30. 30.0. That is the average age. It's going to return you double. What all methods we have apart from this is you can find the maximum, minimum, summation. You can get the count of it. You can get the average of it. So that, that is all things you can do with just one single liner method of Java 8. So that is why it's very usually asked and it is actually very useful in real time scenarios in, in the real time projects. So this is how you do the summary statistic. These static operations are numeric in nature. So you have to call map to integer method. You cannot apply directly on the employee or the list of uh, ages stream. You cannot do that. It provides these utility methods and these actually uh, reduces a lot of code that you have to do before Java 8. Now, another question is, if you're given a stream, how will you slice it up? So if I, if I give you the ages, so let me give an example first. Give you these ages and return the ages. And this is the response. I ask you, okay, great. Now, sort it in an ascending or the descending order. How will you do that? So I'll sort it in ascending first. So a simple method to do is a sorted method. Let's see. So this is the sorted order. 25, 28, 30, 32, and 35. So just with single sorted, you have sorted your ages. Now, for an example, if an interview asks you that find the second and the third youngest employee. So who is the second youngest? It is 28. Who is the third youngest? It's 30. So what you need to do is slice it with just two elements. So your index should be one to two, just two elements you need. So what you can do is you can use skip and limit. So what I'm going to do is, since ages is a list, I'm going to open a stream to it. As soon as I open a stream to it, I can skip n elements. So I, I'll be skipping one element. I'm going to skip one element and I'm going to take two elements. So skip one element and limit it only to two elements. So what does skip do? Skip returns a stream consisting of remaining elements of a stream after discarding first n elements. So I said second youngest and third youngest. So what is should be discarded first youngest. So how many elements? One element. So we are going to skip one element and limit what it do. It returns a stream consisting of elements truncated to be no longer than maximum size. So we said no longer than two you should find. So this is a short circuit operation. So as soon as it goes on to 28, it goes on to 30, it, it reaches its maximum limit of two. All the elements after this are going to be discarded and not going to be processed. So I'm going to collect it to, to a list and in a list, I'm going to return the slice stages to you. So these are the 28 and 30 that is sliced days. 25 was the youngest one. It is sliced. Only two elements that is with skip and limit is re returned to you. So that's how you find the second youngest and third youngest employee in an organization. Let's go to the next question. The next question is convert a string to uppercase and join them with comma. So if you are given an employee database, fetch all the names of an employee, but I don't want it in a list format. I want it in a string format separated by a delimiter that is comma. So how will you first fetch all the names? So we're going to find all map each and, em each and every employee with its name. Now, as soon as you get all the names, all the names are string. If I give you names list, it will contain all the employees name in the list format. Let's see if we get this. Yes, these are all the employees in the list format. Now what I don't want in a list format, I want it as a string and not a list. So what will we do? We are going to open a string on it. And since we need uppercase also, I'm going to map each and every name to its uppercase. This is two uppercase method. And then I'm going to collect it. And while collection, I have to make sure I don't have to collect it as a list or as a set or any kind of collection. I have to collect, collect it by joining a delimiter. What is my delimiter? That is comma and double space. So with this, in place, I'm going to get a string out of it. String name. I'm going to return this name to you. So what I should get is code decode updated in uppercase, comma and space, code decode updated to space, code, comma, space, decode, comma, space, code. So this is the delimiter for us. 
So what does this joining do? It returns a collector. So the collect method needs a collector. That's fine. But what it does, it concatenates the input elements. All the elements which comes, it concatenates it separated by a specified delimiter in encounter order. So in the in the order it comes, then the same order it's going to concatenate it for you. So let's see if this runs for us. So see, we have code. Then we have code again. Then we have updated one, updated two and decode. Now, why is it coming in sorted order? Because we have used sorted method here. Remove the sorted method and it will run in the encountered order. The encountered order was sorted. That is why you were getting everything else in a sorted order. That is code, code decode and then last may you have decode. So now let's run it after removing the sorted order. It should be in the same order that is code decode updated one updated two and then code decode code. Let's see if it runs. Yes, this is the expected order. Since we have used sorted there, that was the problem. So that was all about the questions we have covered. We have many more methods to cover the first element, last element occurrence of a case. We'll cover it in the next video. Thank you.